Okay, so let's talk about this first table. I gave some of you an extra challenge because I noticed all of you calculated precisely and I wanted to see if anyone could come up with ways to estimate to make it a little simpler. So we'll talk about that as well, but let's start off with the exact. How did you do the first row in the table? Multiplying by 100 and applying the decimal point. You're multiplying by 100? Or dividing by 100. Sorry. Divide by 100. Okay. Um, and okay. then you multiply by the cost of purchase. <laughs> and that gives you the amount of tax. Okay. And then what? Uh, add that to the initial cost of purchase. Okay, did anyone do that differently? So that we'll call method one. Did everybody use method one exactly as it's shown? What'd you do, Jermaine? I added what? So what did you end up with? Um, 4, 2, 9, 4, 2, 8. That looks to me like it comes out to 4, 407.322 if you add those. Oh. So that's not really what you did. Look back. See if you can see. So you ended up, what's, what did you all get for the total bill? 429.29. 429.29, is that rounded? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Jermaine, did you figure out what did you do differently? There is a button on your calculator. I don't know if you're using your calculator. You might have d used a different button. No? Do you know what you did? It's hard to look back on that calculator, isn't it? I know what I did, but I just don't know how to say it. Oh, okay. Well, do you want to just talk me through what buttons you pressed? Okay. So okay. I, I put 400 in. Okay. Then the plus sign addition. Okay. Seven point three two two. Then I push the second sign. The you push the what? The second, the yellow button. Oh, okay. Uh huh. And then. Then I push uh, percent, which is number two. Okay. So you did. That's the button I was talking about. Oh, okay. So you did second percent. Yeah. And then equals, and it gives you the answer. Oh, okay. So he has, um, he's increasing that number by 7.322%. So there is a way to do that just with calculator buttons, and this is kind of how it looks. You might want to try it if you have um, a button with a percent, Tori. Are you going to count that, like, say, because that gave him the unrounded number whenever we're on a test, are you going to count that wrong, like a point off for not being rounded up to 29? Oh no, he would round it, wouldn't you? Does, it, do, does it, it give you a longer number? It gives you four point uh four point nine point two eight eight. Oh yeah, you just round it. I don't know if it gave you that number. Yeah, and so you round it. You always round it when it's money to the nearest two decimals. Yeah. Any other methods? That's an interesting one with the percent. I know another way. So I'm going to show you what I like to do. I know that I have to take, and this is a little bit of math, but but you guys can do it. So I know I have to take 400 plus, and this is kind of how Jermaine showed. Um, I'm going to do 0 0.07322. Why would I want to do that? Convert it to a decimal, and then multiply that by 400. Is that what you guys did? But you didn't show it that way on your paper, right? Because you did a piece, and then you added it, and then you got your, your final total. OK, but what I want you to see is that I can factor out that 400. And it's going to be multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.07322. So this 400 is being multiplied by a 1. If you think of it that way, that helps. 400 times 1, still 400. 
So it's a little bit of algebra. Then I'm going to multiply 400 times 1.07322. Try that on your calculator. See what you get. So that's like saying 1 plus the additional. 1 whole 400 and then the additional part for the interest rate. Does it make sense? It, it is initially, but it'll save you some time sometimes if you can look at it that way. So, so there we have 400 times 1.07322. So if I'm just increasing by some percentage, I can write it this way. One whole, the 400, and then the, the part that's just the interest or the tax rate added in. Okay, and that came out to the same thing. Did you all see it? 429288, and then we have to round it and make it 0.29. Yeah, did it work out on your calculator? Okay, so they're equivalent. So that's another method. Okay, and then can we use those same methods on the third or on the second problem there? Well, they'll work there as well. Okay, did anyone find an estimation for that problem? A way to estimate that second problem? Sean, what did you do? Uh, what I did is I took like the cost of purchase and like rounded it up to the nearest hundred dollar. So what did you round to? Uh, 1800. 1800, okay. And would you all say 1756.23 is kind of close to 1800? Yeah, not far. I mean, if we're just trying to estimate, that would be close enough. And then Sean, what did you do next? 100% tax. It was so far to be close to uh, 9%. So I just did, um, I represented as 0.09. Okay. So that's 9% in its decimal form. Okay, very good. And like multiplied it up to find the uh, the amount tax. It got like 162. Then I added 162 to 1800, the original 1800, and it got uh, 1962. So that's a little high, but. And what was the exact? Who had that? Nine zero one. Yeah. Point nine zero. Okay. Is he in the right ballpark? And he knows he bumped his purchase price up and his tax rate up, so he expects his estimate to be high, right? Okay, what else could you do if you were wanting to estimate? Did anyone estimate differently? Because I'm thinking with estimates, they're generally useful when you don't have access to your calculator and still 9% of 1800 is still a little bit hard for me to do in my head. Mark, what do you think? Uh, if you follow Sean's rule, and uh -huh. except the last part, instead of adding it to the 1800, just to add it to the original number, you'll get closer to uh, the exact. Oh, okay. So if he takes the 1756.23 plus our estimate of 162 and add that in, and then you get. 1918.23, much closer. Good. Um, anyone think of a way that we could maybe compute it in our head? Because I can't do 9% in my head very well. I just can't. 10% I can do in my head. Is it close enough? If you round really high uh -huh. and go, say, to like 2,000 and round it up to the 1,000 place, and then do 10% as far as your percent tax. 10% of 1,000 is going to be 100. So you can guess that the 10% uh, of 2,000. Do you all see that? 10% of 2,000. You just move in your decimal one place, right? So it would be 200. 200. And then you add that to the original 2,000 and you get 2,200. Plus 2,000, or we could even go, who was telling me that, Mark, was telling me add it to the 1756.23 because it's a nice round number, right? That's even closer than using the uh, the original number. Yeah. Because it's like 1,500. Yeah, that would work too. We're in the right ballpark, aren't we? 
we're close enough and if I'm just trying to make sure I have enough cash in my bank account to cover it I would maybe just do a quick mental calculation like that and say okay I need to have about two thousand dollars in my account to make sure I can cover this this purchase okay